Awesome. Hello, everyone. Um, it's me, Julia. Yeah, last time we spoke a week ago, and today we will continue. Um, if right now you're thinking like, how, how can we continue? This is the first time when I join. Don't worry, I will explain everything shortly, what we're going to do here. So our today's meeting is called Let's find all bugs. And we are kind of here to find out if it's really possible to find all bugs and reach the best quality of the product, the company. That's that's actually sounds what our employers want from us, from test engineers, like you should find all bugs and actually our product should be clear. Uh, absolutely. So customers would not find them. Um, let's see if it's possible. And I'm not going to answer it right away. Um, and I think we will talk about this uh, at the end. Yeah. So I will remind who am I for the people who doesn't know, um, I, who don't know. Uh, and also, we will do short review of the project. We were working on the documentation uh, very closely one week ago, but I will remind for some of some of you, maybe you just, uh, you know, was on the lesson and it was it. Some of you were working very hard. I uh, received a lot of test cases that I uh, reviewed and provided feedback. Then we will do some short review of test cases. I combined some of it, came up with my own, and I actually put it on the page. So for the people who um, didn't submit test cases, don't worry, I will provide them for you today. But also, I'm kind of counting people who was working, uh, who were working on test cases and submit their own version. It's always more beneficial to work on your own material because, and this is actually, I think the strategy of the school that I work for here, because um, you are, we are giving homework, you are doing it. And while you are doing it, you are working on the subject, you are getting experience. And then it's easy to talk about this while you are trying to find a job. Without this component, it's kind of, OK, I can see any lecture. I can like watch any YouTube video. And then with this knowledge, you're going to find a job, maybe but it would be better when you are sincere and speaking from your experience. So yeah. if you have the opportunity to get this experience, get it. You have free cars with a project built specifically for you guys, just for free course. We don't use it anywhere. Uh, we did it for you. Yeah, get, that's, a, just that's like, a good point. Get it. Yeah. That's a good point. I believe people who are coming for the course they want to achieve something, right? They want to, to get a job or just understand if this is something they like to do in the future, right? If this is the profession they would like and they will continue um, education, but that's important, right? If you came to the course, so you, you need to do the homework because this is the course. And that would be weird if people just join the course and just listen and just not, not doing the homework. What's, what's the point just coming and listening if you're not getting the practice, if you're not getting any knowledge, if you're not not a part of the project, if you're not, not the part of the team that tests the project, right? So that makes no sense. Everybody who comes here, you, you should have some motivation, something that brought you here, something that made you call in to this call and right now sitting with us and doing something right now, right? Something brought you here, some motivation, some some reason. Remember about that reason and just follow these simple instructions. And but yeah, Arthur, let me stop you here because at the same time, we are not shaming anyone about this. It's up to you guys because I'm pretty sure we are awesome just, you know, to visit the lesson and listen to us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And 
Today, uh, our main focus, besides like short review of the project and test cases, of course, the main goal is going to be the testing, the practice. And to be honest, like that was uh, yesterday or no, um, what, what day is it? Tuesday. Uh, over the weekend, I um, I got the opportunity to take a look on the application that our developers uh, actually they made uh, and after that i posted a couple screenshots for you guys in the homework channel it's like and i was not testing it like i was not touching it really i just uh, took a sneak peek you know just like okay is it really what we were asking about it seems so okay and then we will do it on the fly like with uh with the students, right? With the, uh, whoever is going to work on it. So, and today we will do our testing. We will execute test cases that you submitted. Uh, who did it? Please work with your own uh, spreadsheets. Who you know? I will give you an example. Uh, and then the good part is going to be bug reporting, actually. Um, reporting what we found, which issues. And this is very important point specifically for manual QA engineer and even for automation, how to explain the issue that you found. Uh, and um, for example, it, some like long time ago, I was doing bug reports, uh, like just the comments about, okay, I found some issue and it was back in Russia and all our SDLC and our project was kind of mess. But when I started here, uh, and actually it was Arthur who uh, gave me very good advices about how to file bug reports and what I can uh, say, um, developers love me. <laughs> for my bug reports, <laughs> exactly, because just looking into it, they know exactly what they should fix, where, uh, and sometimes even there are suggestions like what to do. So after that, there's gonna be another homework. Um, and yeah, and any questions you can ask anytime, basically. Uh, specifically, it's good when we are talking about something that you have related questions, please just unmute yourself and ask. Also, there are two of us and I believe you will um, pass something into the chat, some kind of questions even you cannot speak and ask uh, when we have some kind of pause or this is a time we can read them and answer. Okay, let's roll it. And remember, uh, mm -hmm. those who will complete all the homeworks will good will get a really good bonus. Really good. You will like love it. So please, it's all of all of for you, all for you. You just get the practice, knowledge, and plus bonus. Yeah. Sure. So for the people who still think about like, okay, why I'm looking at this person and who is she? Uh, my name is Julia Stepica. I am software queue engineer at machine learning startup data, leading acceptance process and releases. Um, my background is in um, mathematics and I love testing and I am sharing this love with others. Okay, so, um, let me pass the links uh, one more time in the chat so we could reach this. Uh, last time we were working on the documentation. Mm. Okay, one second, let me check. Um, yes, like a commenter. Um, so I am sending to the chat link to this document. This is uh, our documentation. If you were looking for like this nice um, uh, representation here for these charts, you can find the link uh, into this documentation and there is password. Um, via this password, you can actually get there. And also you will need um, like in, in a one second, um, 
in a moment or so, you will need this spreadsheet with test cases and we will go over it. So our documentation, uh, there was quite a lot uh, comments. So I already resolved all of them because I answered on these questions or um, I even changed the documentation. And after that, I slack everyone like, okay, hey guys, please review because there were some changes. Some of the comments were just awesome, uh, very interested que uh, interesting questions. And um, by the way, like uh, there were a couple um, very good improvements that we can maybe we will decide, okay, if we are going further with, with this uh, application and basically um, this improvement, we can even implement them. So what the application is doing, um, you were uh, last time, last week, we were reviewing this documentation, reading it and understanding what is it about. I'm not gonna read uh, again the documentation. I'm just gonna uh, do quick overview here on, on this page. So we have one page application. It's not one page application, it's multiple page application uh, overall, but the feature that we are testing, it's for us right now, it's like one page application. We are landing on this page that consists of four elements, the text area, the image, the table, and the submit button that's called get in line. And uh, this kind of get in line, this is a work, working name for the project. So uh, we always can see in this table um, the queue with the people who uh, who are uh, in the line, actually. So people, we, we see their name and first initial last name. There are some IDs for them, the order, and actually this text there shows how many people in the line are in the line. To get in the line, we have to click this button. If we do it, some kind of pop-up appears. In this pop-up, we have two fields for first and last name. Uh, as it was pointed out last time, it was spec bug. It should be like last here on the on the form, uh, but I'm still like keeping it. Uh, after the course is finished, I will update it, of course. <clears throat> and there is birthday field when the uh, future recipient uh, can actually choose their own birthday. <clears throat> For people who is not uh, on Slack, they didn't know, but actually it was updated. Uh, I got a suggestion from developers to actually to change the birthday uh, field, these three fields to the calendar, like uh, to the standard drop down calendar where people can choose their birthday by clicking on the date. So, and I changed the documentation accordingly after that and I slack everyone. So that's how it's happening actually at work when some changes are happening and we decide to go with them. Uh, usually we are trying not to change the, the documentation during the sprint if the development has, start has started, but at the same time, we are always flexible and if we can see better decision and um, everyone agreed about uh, on it, so we go for it. That's like how startups work, basically. Also, there is uh, radio buttons radio buttons uh, as a, um, an element, they actually assume that you can choose only one of them, like only choice usually. It, uh, if you have like mul multiple choice, it's usually check boxes. But this is a radio button and it means like exclu uh, exclusive uh, choice. You can choose a vaccine, which one you want. After you choose it and submit it, another field appear here. Uh, like uh, ID that has very specific format, like four symbols. First, uh, this is a letter P, 
PM or J and how you can see it's kind of which vaccine you choose. This one chose Moderna, it's gonna be M and also random uh, three digits here. Okay, after you, you have this ID, after it showed up, uh, you can close the form. And here, but I I believe that I already like saw it. Uh, there were some changes on this submit close button, and we will talk about this in a minute. Uh, as soon as you close um, this pop up form, uh, you can see the new um, our recipient uh, their data appear here in the table. And the number of the people here were updated to like bump one. Okay, this is our project that we're gonna work on. Uh, any questions here? Uh, not like questions about we're working with documentation, we already worked with this and we even created test cases, but maybe something besides it. But I think it was clear we spent a lot of time last time, right? Okay. The next point is going to be test cases review, how we were testing it. So thank you very much, those who submitted their test cases. I read all of them, uh, if they were, were submitted uh, by deadline. Uh, but for people who sub submitted them on Monday or today, I will review them two but just a little bit when, when they have time it's working work work day so I'm kind of yeah uh, not always I have strength for it so I a little bit modified this uh, page in which one I added here a column that I call test suite and it's kind of help it helps me uh, to separate um, our te my test cases by areas. For example, I can put here, okay, everything related to text, image on main page, table, button, and then like registration form. So it's up to you. You can do whatever you want with your spreadsheet, but I believe this one, um, like template one, you are, uh, you, cannot modify it, but you can uh, make a copy of it. So uh, I shared the link to this page. It, it consists of three uh, pages. I do suggest, uh, so you actually, so you make your own test cases here, but also I provided here my example. And what you need to do right now is make a copy, like file. And I'm going to do it too, because I'm not going to change this template uh, from, from, from now. Uh, and there are like three tabs here, template, so you could work on your own, uh, my, te my test cases, and they are not perfect and maybe we will do some changes today like during this lesson and also there is template for a bug report and we will talk about this in like 15 20 minutes because we will start testing okay so uh what you should do okay let's do it together you open this template test cases and bug reports you go to file and you do make a copy. It's gonna be like copy of, of templates. I usually, uh, every time I like put my last name. So that's my habit. And uh, you copy it in your folder. It's probably gonna be like my drive for you. It's okay. So. It's going to be like like this, my drive, copy on your drive, and OK. It will be opened in a new tab. And let's go to the test cases, to the second tab. It's on the bottom here. And let's review them. So what I did, and it's like kind of um, 
how professionals do it. Uh, for each test case, I provided ID. It's very easy in spreadsheets. You just like drag it and yeah, clone it. For people who think about, oh, okay, and here we use spreadsheets as well. Uh, on the last lesson, I showed that actually this is template imported from the um, Azure DevOps, from the test plans. We were here and I showed how it works. Um, so basically, after you fill it uh, here, you have the opportunity to uh, like import it back. Um, I'm not going to do it because I added additional um, column here for like for us to be more so it would be more comfortable. But maybe if you're interested, we could try this trick like to fill it in here and import it back. So let's see. We were talking already last time about how we would test uh, elements on the main page. Uh, we are kind of splitting all our requirements. We're getting requirements from here, like all these uh, lines, and we uh, convert them into test cases with some modification if needed. And basically it's up to you. It's up to your uh, team lead. Uh, it's up to your group where you work, uh, how you will do these test cases. Some of the companies, they're really doing like great job of putting like very specific steps and actions and they're doing very detailed test cases. In modern world, specifically if you're working as one or to specialize the project, there's no time for it. And you have to go quickly. So you are doing test cases, but some kind of short summaries. And sometimes uh, you even do not provide very specific steps how you're gonna test it, but you're kind of doing checklist what you are gonna um, test. And then based on your knowledges and your experience, you are gonna perform this testing on the fly. Uh, here it's kind of mix. Sometimes we do some steps, sometimes we are not. Let's see. For the text area, we're checking that it's present, that it's uh, uh, it has three lines and purple color of font. I think I copied from someone's page exactly this one. Um, I would split it by two, but here it's okay. Let's let's keep it two because if it fails, so why it fails? Because of three lines or because of purple color font. And in this case, what do we do? We actually insert uh, one additional. So that's why I love spreadsheets, right? The text area consists of three line, BAMS. The text area cons um, has purple color of font. And that's it. We have our test cases. It's uh, very easy to fix. And here, what I'm going to do, bumps and something like this. So it's easy, very easy to fix. Bam. OK, so if you um, if you haven't started testing yet, uh, you can change your test cases, easy. And even if you started testing, you see, okay, something is off really, and they have to rework this part. You can stop, rework it, and then test. It's okay, absolutely. There's no rules, okay. If you uh, put it down, like if you wrote it down, so you have to test as it is. No, there's no such rule. Uh, then the first line is, and we are actually checking, uh, like what the text of each line. There are uh, X people where X is the number of records in the table. And here I will actually check it uh, how. The text is some kind of number and people. And this X is actually a number of the records right now in the table. So I can check it, right? These are two different points. If you wrote it in one, it's okay. The third line is in the line. Yeah, we have it. Then image. 
it's in the in, in the main page it's located in the right upper corner and size of the image uh, matches the parameters of the elements on the page so we are kind of looking into our visual spec here and think thinking about okay it should look like here on the page it should be consistent with the design okay um then we are checking our table for it's on the page it's uh, where it is it's consist of uh, table header three columns first column which which columns and what's in the body okay uh, our open form button sorry it's where it's located uh, it has a label get in line it has background color purple and when we click on it we open pop-up for registration form when it's open registration form is present in the front of the main page so it's kind of here on the top of everything right it's in the in the front then what we see we can see first name field and last name field here and here and it's accept up to 70 symbols there were awesome uh, test cases from the people who actually started um, already introducing positive cases when they're testing with one symbol with 70 symbols and negative uh, test cases when they're starting testing with 71 symbols or they're trying to left, leave the uh, field empty. This was awesome, guys. That's absolutely right approach. And we will talk a little bit more about this. So why I call it like this first name, last name on our uh, here, it was not called like this it was like first uh like first <laughs> obviously it was last uh so what happens here um in our slack channel homework so if you're not here yet so look at this i posted this um uh, picture that was a screenshot from our developers so it was provided when on sunday yeah on sunday sunday night i actually got this information that they julia we want to perform it like this i said yeah okay let's uh go with this so based on this i already updated my my test cases now i know they're going to be first name field last name field and thursday like this mm -hmm. Okay, and also you can see, yeah, I promised you there were changes with submit and console buttons. I haven't updated the documentation yet, so we will need to update our test cases on the flight. So they introduced submit and console button without X. So console is present always here and you can click submit when everything is filled and then you can close it as cancel. So probably we will be um, doing some modification while testing. Okay, under the name field, the registration form that has labeled birthday. Uh, registration form has date picker calendar under label birthday and someone can see, um, I think I stole it from someone cases and also it was written very good from the documentation, my updated documentation. So it's actually checking that, okay, we can uh, open the calendar, we can choose a date of birth by clicking on the day, months can be changed with arrows and year can be chosen by drop down. So everything was described in documentation and I got uh, all this from this picture. Okay, also there is a button today that is not described in the documentation, it's okay, but we need to test it too, why not? Below registration form has a label vaccine. Okay. The radio buttons, they're called like this, this, and this. It's uh, uh, different test cases because there can be a, a, any a, like mistake in any of them. Um, then 
and here C registration form has X icon. It's not going to happen. Then we're going to uh, like I'm not going to change right now, but I will rework later this test cases. Um, and if you're interested, stay tuned in the channel. I will post my the re my my result. Um, OK. And the behavior with submit button when we like click on submit, it's enabled only when all fields are filled with valid information. Uh, after clicking submit button ID appears at the bottom of the form and so on and so on. And close button is enabled and la la la. So this is was this was your homework, pretty much it. Uh, what I was kind of expected. Uh, some of you did much more with uh, positive negative cases, but we are not uh, going too deep in this field. We definitely learn it uh, during our courses, several test methodologies, like the, the different uh, test design technique, how to come up with the, such test cases. But this is not for the short one. We're going mostly with positive, but we will talk about uh, talk about negative cases while we were going to test. OK, so any questions here? With uh, this remark that uh, negative cases, they're kind of out of scope a little bit. Mm -hmm. Then let's test it, guys. So what do I have here prepared? Here it's instruction about like, OK, how to get um, template, test cases, and bug reports template. And let's talk a little bit of testing concept. What we're going to do right now, we're going to execute our test cases. That they are already written. If you copy them, you can like uh, actually go through the page and check and mark it pass or fail here. But um, we are going to, when I am testing, I put some kind of testing concept here when I have to uh, work and test something very fast, what I do usually. Like when I see some kind of page, uh, there is a workflow for me. I'm checking that all elements that I expect here on the page. I uh, trying to do proper testing of the main functionality. So what this application is for. Uh, and also, what does it mean like main functionality? The main functionality is what actually described in user guides, in our documentation, and so on. And basically, it's our positive scenario, how user should behave, how users should do. After I check all of it, I will try some kind of corner cases or negative cases when I will try to break application. If it says that uh, the field accept up to 70 fields, what I'm going to do, I'm going to put 71, right? Uh, more than it allows me uh, and see, OK, how the application reacts. Is it handle this such this this type of um, situation or not? Is it giving me some kind of error and notification? Hey, hey, that's too much. Stop it. Um, and then at the, uh, at the end, I will kind of uh, check design and, te and text. But when I'm saying text, I'm saying on something like um, not the main information, because if it's like the main logo or um, the choices, right, that we have to make like main functionality, I'm checking text uh, right away, of course. Uh, all our uh, test cases that we already put down, they're requirement driven. We just took requirements and we kind of um, uh, convert them into test cases. And if we do like this, they will not have negative scenarios that will break application. They're not supposed to. So if you want to do some negative scenarios about like how to break the application, it's on the top of it. But yeah, we will try, of course, today and probably we'll find some bugs. So let's execute our test cases. 
Um, yep. And as soon as we meet, um, so why we are gonna run this test case and, and check the application? Someone will say, okay, we are going to find bugs, right? This is our goal to find some bugs. But always when people are like, by the way, when during the, um, um, when during the interview, like I am as an interviewer, I'm asking, I'm asking someone, why, why do we need testing? Like, why, why, why are you, why we're testing application? Maybe someone, I'm, I'm in the mood for just like talking and so on. And I'm like asking, why do we need testing? And people start, okay, we're trying to find bugs. Attitude of finding bugs, it's good. But from my point of view, it's not very, it's not really correct attitude. Uh, your goal is not to find bugs, and right? Our today's lecture is actually it's called "Let's Find All Bugs." Yes, you have to be excited about. Okay, I found a bug, but your goal is not to find the bugs. Your goal is to make sure that the application was um, implemented correctly, that requirements were developed correctly. Um, as a result of your testing, of your checking that everything was uh, like implemented fine, you will find some bugs and you will be excited about this, but your attitude should go from the different point. Uh, why I'm telling it? Because uh, when we're talking about bugs, if you have wrong attitude, uh, I don't think you will be friends with developers <laughs> because like, you should be at the same side with developers. You should care about the quality of the application. They do care about quality of the application too, really. And they do their best, even though sometimes yeah, I cannot like look at their feature that they implemented because like my eyes are bleeding, but still <laughs> we are on the same side. And if you care about the quality of the application, then um, they're not gonna be any blaming between you with developers like hey you implemented this kind of feature come on so that shouldn't be like this okay so um it was just like uh maybe something additional not not from this lesson but it's really uh, um like pain point in many many companies and when you are thinking about becoming test engineer, think about this moral side of the situation too. Uh, like always um, try their shoes too, okay? So what is a software bag? If we are gonna execute our test cases, go and check if everything that we described and we planned works uh, as uh, designed, then uh, if you found like what you described in um, your documentation, like in your test cases here, one second, here, what you get from the documentation, this is expected result. When you're testing, you expect it to be like this. But when you touch the application, when you open the uh, web page and you see the result and it's like, something wrong here you have what is it it's actual result right this actual result in this case what you're doing okay you are comparing what you see on the screen and what you see in the documentation what you see in your test documentation in your test cases if there's some kind of mismatch the difference between them this is a bug so when uh, people during the interview starting uh, starting uh, uh, come up with some kind of very complicated uh, description of what is software bug, I'm like, okay, okay, in your own words, please. And it's so easy. It's easy as a difference between expected and actual result, mismatch between expected and actual result. And it's okay to say it like this. And everything, everyone understand, okay, what you're talking about. So, um, 
and do I have do I have okay I have to stop annotation yeah so and when we will find some kind of bug reports about bug bugs this mismatches we will file bugs a lot of documentation for test engineers, right? This is another side of this job, actually. You're writing test cases, you're doing bug reports, you're writing, 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 a lot, a lot, a lot. It's not so much time of just clicking and having fun with application, by the way. So <clears throat> what is it uh, about? I actually put a couple examples, one from Azure DevOps, how the bug report looks like. Uh, this one is from Jira and this is a set of fields, basically, what, what is uh, like bug, bug report, set of fields, and you should uh, describe some kind of summary, what happens, right? What's wrong with, the, uh, with this, what you found. Then you have to come up with uh, very strong steps to reproduce, how to reproduce this bug report. Um, Des describe how to get into this situation and you have to put actual result and expected result actual what you see in the application right and expected what was in the requirements it was supposed to be like this and you did absolutely different thing so this is the bug uh, and very often our actual result uh, it has some kind of attachments uh, for it can be like there are specific like attachments right in in these forms in nice tools uh, but also you can just like put it into the field actual result and it's nice to see it right here so this is what we're gonna do and if you go to our spreadsheet and uh, you can click on the third tab you will see this kind of uh, form that it just came up with um, it has all these fields id usually if you are writing these bug reports in the system it will be automatically um, assigned with some kind of id there are summary steps to reproduce actual result expected result there are two more fields and we will talk about them if we will have time priority and severity if you're interested in them and there is a some kind of field when you can put some kind of picture screenshot and so on okay let's roll it okay drum roll there is a link for the application i know you were waiting it so come on guys Okay, so what do we see? Actually looks like something that we were looking for, that we were expecting. Interesting. I can see that that is exactly the application that we were talking about all this time. Uh, I will give you a minute, just like observe it. And then I will be testing it. There was a suggestion in the um, comments of, for the YouTube video, like, hey guys, just split the video for, like split your screen in two parts. So you could like go between them and so on. But I don't want, I, I will be doing like this. And I, because I, I need to look into some of them. So let's go to the, <laughs> I registered finally. My husband kept telling me to get a vaccine. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> There's no warranty <laughs> anyway, right? Okay, so here, what we're gonna do here, we're gonna execute this test cases. And by the way, maybe someone want to share the screen and actually to perform some testing. How about this? Because I'm working and speaking for so long. How about this um, interactive uh, activities, guys? So I hope 
you have it on the screen. So maybe someone wants to share their screen and just to go through test cases and execute them. For example, couple um, couple elements here. And I will hear, I will be here, I will comment everything if you want. Mm? Give me a break. Hey. I have a little suggestion. Yes. Um, so can you open the form for a, a reporting bug report? Yes. So um, I have an idea. Mm -hmm. So for this, we can use uh, forms, not spreadsheet, but form with the fields and everything will be submitted into one form. I can quickly go and create it. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, that would be nice. Okay. And people will be submitting their bug reports, right? Yeah. Uh, that's awesome. Yeah, that's absolutely awesome. For homework, it will work a lot. Yeah. Okay. But still, here is example, and I will work right now with this one. Um, okay. Volunteers. This is your chance to, to shine. No, no one. How about be proactive? Okay. I can share if you want. Uh, yes, absolutely. So I will stop my sharing and you can share your screen. And let me bring some lights. Awesome. This is application. Um, okay, let's start from from the top, okay? If you cancel, uh, yeah, okay. And you will go to the test cases, to the second one, and we're gonna execute them. Julia, if you're speaking, you're muted. All right, I, 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 I don't see my, um, how to say, um, Okay, give me a second. <laughs> I cannot find uh, a link to the because it's covered with um, a control. You can drag it. You can uh, take this control and drag it, uh, it. Yeah. to the bottom, for example. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah here awesome okay uh awesome so you have this pass pass fail um column and what we're gonna do we're gonna read the test case and we're gonna check it on ui and if it's pass we will do pass if it fail we will do fail okay Let's uh, yeah sure so the first one is mm -hmm, text area is present in the main page. Let's check it if it's uh, correct. We do have text area, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, it's here. So this test case passed, right? Is it this one? Yes, this is text area. Okay, mm -hmm. Awesome, green. The next one. Oh, okay, it's checking actually that all elements here. Okay, so let's check four of them. Text area, image is present, table is present, and the submit button, open form button is present. Okay, let's check them. Go to the application, uh, text area, image, table, and so all four elements are here, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's go and check them as pass. I think you a little bit, you, you missed one, the second one, but it's like, yeah. Okay. Okay, so what was the next? And the number five was about images is uh, presented in the right top corner. Okay, this is here. It's the right top corner. It's, yeah, you already marked this pass. Good. 
text area has three lines and there are three lines visible. Okay, and what happens here? Well, there is two lines visible and it should be three lines, right? Like Okay, one. could you try and uh, in this case, when I see it, and by the way, uh, this is suggestion for everyone. If there's cases like this, you want to check some kind of the text, how it present, try to resize your page, like do it the window narrow or bigger and see how it responds. Now, I don't mean zoom. I mean, actually take the, um, you know, the corner of your window and try to do it smaller. Responsive design. Uh, how? Just like um, drag the window so um, go to the corner of your window. Mm -hmm. So it would be like error, uh, arrow um, uh, on the right border, for example. Okay. Oh, I think you are on full size. Um, one second. Could you, on the momento, could you try this button? Which one? I am doing annotation, okay? Yeah. yeah, for example, like this. See what's happened? Yeah. Okay, so actually our text, it's not three lines, right? It's actually one line. And if like you could do your screen even bigger, your window even bigger, uh, even wider, for example, probably you would see this in one line, the yeah. entire text. So that means the test case about, okay, it's in three lines. What is it? Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's not a bug, it's a, what? Uh... Why, it's bug. It was described uh, absolutely explicitly in our requirements that it should be three lines and it's not, this is a bug. Congratulations. Oh. You should mark it as a fail. Yeah. Okay. okay, awesome. So let's go through uh, more. Maybe you can finish like main page and someone else can go through registration no. form as well. Yeah, yeah, of course. Okay. Uh, yeah, sure, thank you. Okay. Um, so do you want to continue? Uh, no, I will let other students participate as well because... Uh... Okay, okay. Someone wants to continue, guys? Come on. See? It's easier. And Julia already got one bug. I have created the form. Okay. Uh, okay. Okay, DVS said found the bug. Cool. <laughs> That's cool. And you should be like excited, right? With many, many, um, like, okay. <sighs> I think right now we find so many bugs in our phones. Applications are everywhere. Phones, computers, right? Yeah. So, okay. Guys, who wants to continue? Come on. I was not actually, I was listening to Julie and I forgot to uh, mark my um, test cases as well. Okay. Um, look, if no one wants, if uh, you don't want, I can skip it actually, because we do have, because th that was the idea, right? Go through your test cases and check it and for the main page everything else is very very easy the the questions are when you kind of implement all of it right you went through all this uh okay how it looks like what uh, columns it has and so on and so on mm, let me refresh the page by the way hmm you saw something have you seen have, have you saw it Oh, someone is trying negative cases. Okay. Hmm. See when I'm refreshing the page, what is happening? 
And what's with this button? Okay, it's like in two lines. It's so ugly. And it let me let me choose my birth date as of today's date. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> That's just awesome. I so it's actually back about uh, calendar because vaccine not supposed to be a good person younger than 16 years old. So it should be locked. It was not described in requirements, so there's no such a requirement for us. But the thing that should be absolutely implemented that we cannot choose like today as a, a birthday or tomorrow dates or so on, right? It's kind of, yeah. Uh, okay, let me check the chat. Where can we report the bug? Uh, okay, could you send me the link for doc for documentation? Let me one more time. Let me send all the links, documentation, and okay, and this spreadsheet. One more time, uh, Arthur, you promised us the form. We are waiting for the for this in the chat. Yeah, I sent you the form in Slack. Oh, okay. Let me check. Let me check. So this is going to be like this. Um, ID for the bug. Okay. Summary steps to reproduce, actual result, expected result, attachment, severity, okay, and priority. Okay, awesome. So let's talk uh, right now about these fields on the example that we found, okay? The, first, the very first one. I will explain everything. Then uh, actually, your goal will be execute all these test cases, maybe modify some of them if that they're not applicable because X, uh, and we will talk actually about this. Okay, let's check. So for this one, um, about like text area consists of three lines, it was failed. Okay, I will go to the bug reports here, for example, and I will create the bug reports. ID is going to be uh, like, for example, just like just one, okay. Uh, there are some rules about like how we are going to describe it. The first one is summary and summary should be uh, uh, one sentence that actually already explain what happens. And let's talk a little bit about this situation. So uh, what happens? We found a bug. Just unmute yourself, guys, and your version about like how we describe this bug. Mm -hmm. Julia? Probably we should um, describe main functionality like where the page where we found it. Uh, that's uh, what the good suggestion that we should mention where we found it. That's good. But what what happened? The very first thing, like what what's happening? Like what is the problem? We're talking about this one, right? We are supposed to see it's in three line and it's actually not the line. So what is it? What is the problem? There's a mistake in the text. Uh, the text field is adjusting as you resize it. Mm -hmm. So should we be checking for the number of lines? Yeah, basically, basically our text area. So let me give you a hint. It's very easy when your uh, actual test case is described very good, like this. Text area consists of three lines. What's wrong? It text. Yes, it doesn't consist of three lines. <laughs> so this is what happened. The very good approach it's actually say what's wrong this is wrong it's not like this so what we're gonna do we're gonna okay so uh text area area 
um, doesn't consist of three lines, right? Yeah. Doesn't consist of three lines. And that was what happened, right? Then ideally we should put two more things, where and when. So it's kind of 3W rules. 3W, what, where, and when. So what text area doesn't consist of three lines? Where? What is it? Where are we? On the, On main, the main page. page. Yes, correct. On the main page. And where? What is happening? Where it doesn't consist of three lines? Left top corner. When? When? Oh, yeah, when, when? When we do responsive when? design? Yeah, I would actually, when we uh, resize the page, for example, we can put it something like this. Because sometimes people, they can actually open the application exact in this position, for example, like this. See? And they say, hey, that's perfect. What are you talking about, right? That's perfect. So what are, it's three lines and you cannot prove. So let's put I'm it I'm a here. developer and I will tell you, hey, it works for me. Here's this yeah. screenshot. Yeah, I can even like <laughs> send you a screenshot. Come on, see, it's like it like this. Yeah, text area doesn't consist of three lines on the main page when user, uh, can we say resize the page? Why not, right? I have a question. Yeah, yeah, sure. So, so you are looking at it that you can resize the page when it's on your own laptop, but if you're going to a place like this, wouldn't it be kind of locked, the page? Um, this is the web application. That means that it's open in the browser, right? I agree, but it will be on a laptop at the place or on a kiosk. Probably it will be at the kiosk, but right now we are talking about this application. Maybe people can get into this page and actually get in the line from their mobile phone or from their laptop or so on and so on. So in this case, yeah, we're talking okay. exactly. Yeah, absolutely. Um, okay, now let's go to the steps to reproduce. What we should do, and, it, and that's very easy. We should open the app yes of course open the app and here i even like we have only one application here so i even don't need to like to do what is it uh if we have like really multiple pages we could like pass the url even like where we are going and so on or we, we should describe for example we have like main page, we have reg registration form, we could have like specific names for this page. So I would go like, go to this page. I would call this specific page that we're doing like shortcut, open the app. And then what we're doing, like how we testing? Residing the page. Oh, yes. So, but the very first thing that I'm doing, for example, I open the app like this what is the first time i'm i'm actually looking into the text area first right the first very first thing so i'm kind of inspect that what i uh, i love to use this word for example inspect the text area if you noticed i always like capitalize the this kind of specific fields or buttons it's kind of habit habit and to emphasize like what are uh, am i looking for inspect the text area uh three um resize the page um something like this right and actual result uh i am describing very simple words something like actual result uh when um like okay I even don't don't need to explain again, like resize the page. And here I can say, okay, the text, uh, the text um, mm -hmm, 
is not in three lines it can be like something like this very easy can be one line for the white page or five six for a narrow one in really human language i explain what is it and that's it and i don't need like very i i i don't have to be a poet here right you know it's not a poem it should be like simple and like this and expected result um here i can like go here into documentation and say like this i love working with documentation because it's like um Um, easy um, also what we can do we can provide a screenshot here so I go to my application here and let's break it um, you can use so, so for this screenshot you can use uh, standard um, tools like on macOS there is a very good screenshots uh, on Windows you can do print screen too. Also very popular tools are uh, light shots. I'm, uh, let, let me let me show you. Light shot screenshot, it's available for Mac and for Windows and it's free. Uh, for example, at work, I use Dropler. It's very good um, application. It works like this. Let me show you. Uh, I have like hotkey. Uh, at my computer, some kind of combination. I can, and I don't need the full screen here, right? I'm just like showing, okay, the part of it and I can do whatever. I can do some text and the text area in two lines, something like this, I can, save it and what I suggest to do I would suggest copy this image and just paste it it's going to be huge so I can uh, resize it oh come on Okay. Not super comfortable. Something like this. That's going to be enough. So something like this. So basically in the forms, uh, you can pass it into the actual result. Uh, for example, in our Azure DevOps, for example, if I go to this print board and for example, there's a user story text area, how it would look like in our system, for example, I would go to this text area. I would create new item back and I would um, actually to pass here my summary. Bum. It will be opened here. I will do this like steps to reproduce. Open the app and blah, blah, blah. And here in my actual result, I will do what um, blah, blah, blah. And here I can copy this picture and put it here. See, it will look like this. Uh, expected um, the text area should be in three lines. And this is our back report. Yeah, this is it.
So when developers will open it, they will fix it. So uh, why it's important actually to write the good summary? And this is like one of the most important things to describe it right away. Because uh, developers, they can see these bugs uh, on the board or like this, or in the list. It can be some kind of filter in your Jira or Azure DevOps, and they are looking into it. And it's very important to put what's what is happening into this one sentence exactly, because they will know right away, okay, which area is broken and what even like, okay, what I should do with this or so on. So this is what it is. And also there is two, other points, very important, that actually Arthur um, put here in this bug report form is um, severity and priority. Uh, let's uh, like talk about them very quickly. So basically, as a QA engineers, we we should assess the severity and priority of the bugs. Um, and what we really can do, we can assess severity right away because we know, okay, when we are testing it, we can say, okay, is this some kind of minor issue? Is this kind of design and it, it doesn't affect really the user uh, or it really affects the user or it's blocking the user from some kind of workflow and we cannot work with this area or it's actually crashed the application like completely and after this action we cannot open it and so on and so on. So severity it's how this bug, how this issue affects the system like the entire application right now. This is severity, how severe it is, right? Uh, how how sick are you? Oh, I have so severe cold, right? It's so severe. You can you can be a judge here, right? Severity right away. You know it. So about this issue, by the way, what is severity? What do you think? Minor. Uh, minor, of course. It's even it, it doesn't affect the user because we still can we still can read everything. We actually yeah it, it's it's fine you know picture is not overlapping so we can see all, all of it so yeah it's design minor i agree with you guys so for this bug report what i would do i would put a severity minor okay but let's talk about priority here too so um priority, this is slightly different. Uh, we can assess priority from our point of view, but we are not product owner. We are not speaking from their, um, we are, we are not, um, speaking from the customer point of view. We are not product team. We are we are testing team. So we can kind of guess uh, and uh, if you are very experienced already and you know the product very well and you know how the product team assess the priority of the box, then you can uh, talk about priority very well. Yes, it, it comes with experience with uh, when you're working on the product more and more, and then you can tell. But at the beginning, usually what we're doing actually, for example, in our company, we do have bug triage. When we have many, many bugs, we are kind of opening them. And sometimes we are not opening them, but we are like just looking and uh, at their, um, summaries and we already know what is it about and we uh, are kind of um, prioritizing them. Uh, this bug triage who participates, of course, test engineers, maybe tech lead, some kind of developers and um, um, product team, for example, product owner himself or sometimes product manager um, who knows the product and who knows what customers want because priority it how fast we will fix it and it's how important it from the product 
team point of view, right? So basically we can know, of course, we can kind of be a judge here, but um, actually the last word, it's um, um, after our product owner. So priority, it's very simple. So here, what uh, Arthur put, he put low, medium, high, and urgent. It can be very different. In this form, it's like here, low priority, high priority. What is high priority? High priority is uh, uh, pick up my son on time from the school, right? <laughs> like, and urgent, it's pick him up if he uh, fell and uh, broke his arm or something like this. It's really urgent. So. A low priority, it's something like, oh, I can do it and can like postpone it, something like this. What is priority for our issue for this one? Should we fix it right away or can we postpone it? Mm -hmm. We can postpone it. That's a good call, by the way. Yeah, I would agree. It's it doesn't break functionality, so it can be as postponed. Yeah, if uh, for ex if this text would be like in one line, and after resizing it would be overlapped, for example, by this picture, I would say it's like high priority to fix it, right? Because we don't know on which screen people will be looking into this. But since we can see it always, it's going to be low priority. Um. Okay. So good for this one, I will put priority here. I will put priority three. Uh, that means like low priority, priority number one, right? It's like the list here. It's one, two, three. It means like the list first task, then second and third. Okay. So with this one, we did it. And in my template here, I would put two. Priority number three and severity is minor. How do I get Azure DevOps link? You cannot. Only uh, our students are working there because Azure DevOps, it's a paid platform and it costs a lot. So we do not provide links for it during free courses. But what I do, I do some kind of substitutes here and it's free in the Google form. And actually I spent a lot of time designing it. So yeah, and it has all these fields and you can have these feelings. What is it about and work with it. So uh, later when you are gonna test it, uh, uh, you can, what you can do, you can just like copy it, like all this thing and you can paste it here and you can fill it in with new data, update it and so on. So for the people who are already submitting their test cases, you can just like, uh, you know, create additional tab in your previous documents and actually like um, create it here, uh, copy it and submit it too. So you do understand what is gonna be like, yes, homework. We have to execute our test cases, test it, and submit bug reports. So here, here we go. Um, basically, basically, what we're gonna do, let me check if I have any items in my um, presentation here. How did you make a screenshot? I did it with um, my, uh, with a Dropler, with paid program, but also there is a light shot, is a free one. And also you can Google like how to do screenshot on Windows or how to do screenshot on Mac and it will give you a combination of the buttons and you can use it and do a screenshot. Okay. But by the way, uh, with my, yeah, comment shift three for Mac, for example. Yeah, thank you very much, guys. You already like, uh, yeah, giving suggestions. Homework will be based on your test cases, test the application. 
And here is the link to the application. Create bug reports. Make a copy of the template. Look into the third tab. Third type uh, tab is here. And let me actually or submit your bugs via the form. And I will update my presentation on the fly. OK. Um, join our Slack and submit your homework in the channel homeworks. And you can always reach out to me, Slack me a direct message. I'm always open, um, not always during my work day, but still. OK. So any questions here? And I know you're probably already like did some testing here and you want to ask any questions. You can uh, ask me right now. I have a question, not for you, but for everybody. Mm -hmm. How do you like the course so far? <laughs> Does anyone have any feedback, any impression? Yeah, my impression is really good. I like that we're doing a lot of um, practice. I think it's very useful. Oh, thank, thank you. you. <laughs> yeah. It's very interesting and like, let's say, free knowledge for now. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That was a point, by the way, guys. Yeah, mm, yeah. I just imagine thank you. when you get to the last lesson, we will when we will consume this knowledge, then coding knowledge, you will create your first automation script and it will test the application for you. I just imagine how will, happy will you be there. Yeah, blown out, right? Yeah, Any other I, feedback? Yeah, I, I like that it is so detailed. Uh, it's been a decade since I did this and I like detail. So yeah, it was fun to find a bug after a long time. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> after 10 years so yeah <laughs> that was a while for me yeah um, that's true. but i like that it is so detailed and uh, at least it is helping me getting back into the groove of not missing things mm. going step by step nice nice so thank you yeah guys by the way uh so couple suggestions when you are gonna like test on your own i know we were not covering it here in our free course uh, but still some kind of hints okay to explore the elements you can use uh like the chrome dev tools always uh like by clicking inspect and looking into uh, here, there's a tab computed. You can see like the sizes and so on. It's not very interesting in our case because uh, we uh, were not provided with such information in documentation. It was not described like, okay, about colors and so on. The only thing that we should be checking like if it's consistent. So uh, for example, what does it mean? Um, Across application, we are using like purple color, right? And it shouldn't be like one tone and then like the another and it looks awkward. So it should be consistent across the application. So it's fine. Um, also, by the way, not like bugs, but like, but you can file it as bugs or you can list it. You can create what I suggest. If you, if you have any suggestions, or improvements, what do you see? It, what do you see? It's not like the bug really, but you want some kind of improvement for this. Um, just in your template, for example, that you are gonna submit, just create a new page, add a spreadsheet. You can call it uh, suggestions for example. And here uh, you can pass any suggestion about the application, how it should like. For example, right now I'm looking at it and I'm really uh, thinking that it should be bigger. I mean, the font size here of, of this table should be bigger, something like this. Um, another thing, uh, have you noticed that, for example, someone put it here like 
70, for example, symbols and it was resized, right? It's kind of not uh, very pleasant to see. So it probably should be somehow fixed and can be suggestion because it was not described in requirements. Something like this, you're free to describe it. If you have some kind of feedback, uh, don't like hold it. Yeah, spill it out, okay? In, for example, in this form, or you can just uh, create a thread in in a, uh, in uh, our Slack and like just like text about, hey, I think it should be like this or like that. Also, yeah, here, uh, if right now you're going to be like, okay, there's no cancel button here, like X, um, I wouldn't call it back. Kind of requirements has changed here. Let's. Uh, how many bug reports do we have to send? Uh, all that you found. I know at least five. I know at least five that I see right now. But uh, if you found 10, yeah, or maybe even more. Because as I told you, I haven't, um, I haven't tested it. But I promise to you guys that on Sunday, I will do some hints to you about like where to look for, and I will list, um, not list, but tell you how many valid bugs that uh, like myself as a really valid bugs I found, for example, that information I will share on Sunday with you in Slack. Okay. Julia, I have one question. Yeah because it's not part of the requirements, like somebody entered numbers. Shouldn't it be part of the requirement that numbers are not allowed? Basically, we can uh, to do, we can pass the symbols because um, any symbols, um, I don't know, maybe there are very strange people who has uh, some kind of numbers in their name. Why not? Uh, you know, there is a like, uh, for example, there are really people something like um, John John Jr., but they're really like John the second, and they can, oh, yeah. yeah, they can something like this, you know, John Doe, and they can. So about this like button today, it's kind of not a bug, but we don't need such such a feature here, right? Yeah. So it's kind of confusing. So you can file it as a bug or you can file it as an improvement that we should um, like, yeah. Okay, is there a proper name for this type of testing that we did today? It's functional testing, guys. We are uh, doing functional testing and there are many types of testing. If you, you go to some kind of, um, if you Google like types of the testing, it will throw you a list of like 100 different types of testing. And what is the proper name? It's functional. What does it mean? We test it if it's functioning um, as it is. Also, it's if we will uh, look at this from the point access to the code, did we have access to the code, any code here? No, we didn't. But we saw already result of the code that developers produce, right? That's called black box testing. When you don't see what's inside the box, you don't you don't see the code, but you see what's what is output. You are testing output of it. So like the main point, what is it? It's functional testing. You are testing how the application is functioning, but also from this point of view, you can call it black box testing, for example. And also, for example, let's um, let's see. Uh, let's uh, see. Sometimes we are doing like this line after line testing, right? But at the same time, sometimes we are checking this scenario. For example, what is our main goal here in this application? To check if the person can register and see their name in the line, right? So from the end to the end, end to end testing. What is end to end testing for us? 
open the page, uh, check, for example, how many uh, people in the line, 21, click here, uh, register, and just because I'm lazy, I will click today. And that's actually, this is so wrong. It's like so tempting to do a uh, mistake. So this is, yeah, I would file it as a bug. And I say, okay, I want Pfizer and I click submit and I get this ID P and here I am. So this was end-to-end -end testing. It's still functional testing, you know, because I'm checking functional, but this one, this approach, when we are looking into scenarios from end-to-end, -end, it's called end-to-end -end testing, for example. Uh, see, so we're kind of, we're performing, if, if you want to uh, brag on the interview, you're saying like, I know, oh, I doing so much. I'm doing so many types of testing. You already did three. <laughs> yeah, but what uh, Yarek, for example, talking about like smoke regression. Uh, yeah, that's different types of testing. It's like when you run it, how many test cases you run it. So there are different types of it and we learn all of them, yeah. Monkey testing, yes, when we're just like clicking everywhere, right? Monkey testing. Yeah, something like this. Um, where to look? So guys, yeah, don't forget, try to break the application too. It will get, it, it will give you some a very interesting result. When I'm telling, when I'm saying break the application, try to put wrong numbers here and there, like we call it negative cases. When you are not following the test cases here, um, that we described, but also you're going uh, out of the borders, right? And we haven't described it here because it's like not in our scope of the free course, but uh, basically we are supposed to describe them too. And we're learning uh, this approach, how to do it and how to cover with minimum cases, uh, even negative sites we're learning. But for the people who submitted uh, negative cases, I look through all of them, I check of them and they were amazing. Yeah, and I actually provided feedback. So if you uh, create your own test cases and I see a couple of the people, they submitted their homework right now, uh, like during the uh, lesson, it's okay. I still will uh, look into them and provide some feedback maybe not right away when I have time, but yes, I will, absolutely. So any questions, guys? Yeah, sorry, I'm talking too much because I, I want like, oh, I have this opportunity to give you some information. So I will be giving, <laughs> just stop me and say, shut up, Julia, and answer my question. <laughs> no, no questions. Not, not, maybe not, just about testing, but any anything, because I think that's, uh, yeah. The second and uh, the last my uh, free lesson in this session. No. Okay, then. Uh, so Arthur, do you have any um, word suggestions or some kind of information that you want to provide and yeah? I think we can. No, I think my impression that we are doing pretty good. I really enjoying <laughs> the team is working on their assignments because um, we used to do a lot of free courses and biggest problem we usually have, people just not, you know, just came to listen, listen, watch, you know, not do anything, not motivated. But this course, so many people doing their assignments completing the homework is like amazing really i yeah i'm amazed so arthur how about the gift for for the bug mm -hmm. can we oh, announce yeah, yeah, it yeah. right now we yes agreed. we agreed with julia who will find the most interesting bug will get a t-shirt like this <laughs> it's a button, awesome. by the way that's a good one yeah 
<laughs> yeah, I like it. It's like, you know, uh, I'm, I'm telling myself that it's like uh, Iron Man style when you have this thing in your on your chest. Yeah, I like it too. So, yeah. <laughs> awesome. Absolutely. So, yeah, guys, dig deeper. Think about this. Don't forget about like uh, attachment, about screenshots uh, for your back reports. And I... Uh, don't procrastinate like get into it try it because like in one week uh i will give you one week and they will provide feedback and for the people who already submitted their test cases they know that i actually go through everything i read maybe i miss some points sometimes but i really like carefully reading everything so this is your opportunity it doesn't matter if you will stay with us or not uh like uh, just get this experience come on that's uh really um, that's a real example this is a real project you can play with it uh you can submit uh your like uh records here and so on uh, and no one will like uh you know tell you hey don't or no one will um in one week, I think it will be down uh, and then it will not work on this. Um, yeah, on this URL. But before that, try it and get feedback. This is good opportunity. So come on. And um, yeah, if you need any advice, just like Slack to us, contact us. All my contacts are in the presentation. So come on, I'm open for is it late to ask a question? No, no, sure. Uh, I have a question because I I can cut, catch. Uh, for example, uh, we have uh, file uh, test cases, mm -hmm. and uh, we should uh, do we should fill this file uh, by uh, ourselves. Yes. So okay. Well, for example, I uh, see um, uh, what. Table body has no, not this. Um, one moment, please. One moment. Uh, first column of table is number, uh, for example. And um, how do I know that it should be number? For example, maybe uh, it's um, it should uh, shouldn't be number. Maybe it should be uh, some word. It uh, so, it was written in the documentation. Yeah. Um, uh, it, it it will be written in the documentation. Yes, sure. That's what was we are doing. Like one week ago, we were reading all this documentation. We started uh, converting all this documentation, all these points into the test cases. What we are going to check. If we have this information, it was described, we are going to test it later, right? And because mm -hmm. of that, we are creating these test cases. Yep. Yes, but after that, uh, uh, we are going to uh, check it. Is it uh, fail or um, uh, not Pass. fail? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, so, so uh, we create this um, sentence. Uh, for example, first column of the table is number, and after that, we checking it. You are checking it into the application. Yes, you're going and actually checking. Okay, is it uh, really uh -huh. in this column? Is it really like? the numbers if yes that means it works correctly right and you are actually doing like yes it pass um look this is the whole idea of working as a test engineer you create this is your test documentation you create it and then uh when application is ready one week ago we had documentation it was one week ago, we already had this plan, how it should yeah. work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and now when we have this application, oh, cool. So we test it based on our documentation and check like pass, fail, and so on. Why we need this? Because um, when we are gonna release it, like uh, really to the customer, uh, like product team, product owner, they're asking, okay, was it tested? Uh, are we sure that uh, like customer will be satisfied with the quality of the product? And we are saying, yes. And they, how do you sure? Uh, how are you sure? And we are saying, because of that, 
and we have all our results documented. You know, there are proofs of our work. So, and by the way, there's one question I know on the usually on the first lectures, um, like my student there asking, Julia, what is going to happen that we miss like really serious bug and it's going to production and customers will find it. Will they fire us? Like, will I be fired because I kind of missed this bug and I say, First of all, it depends on bug and it should be like something really ugly and bad. And like customers should, uh, for example, uh, you know, uh, kind of l uh, lose a lot of money. So it would be really dangerous bug, right? But uh, if you're creating test cases, if you're filing the bugs, you're creating a lot of test documentation and you are, you are safe because uh, all this documentation, it's reviewed by the entire team. Uh, there are peer, peer review, there are mutual meetings. You are always working with the team. And for example, in our, in our school, in our lessons, we are working as a team. We cross review each other. We are sharing and it's, yeah, Yarek said, exactly. It's the whole team is responsible and not just like QA team, product team and dev team. It's the team responsibility, right? And to be safe, uh, we need to create this documentation. It's very important. Um, yeah, manual testers, they create a lot of documentation. Automation testers, they a lot of using this documentation and creating scripts. I do like both sides of this job as a manual QA as a, and as a automation QA. Uh, I don't know, maybe um, no, I'm a strange person, but I do like create documentation. <laughs> I, I imagine that you don't have documentation. I believe the answer is when you don't have documentation. First of all, everything uh, that happens on the project is a team effort. So developers, they also take the, uh, the requirements and create the application based on that. And your goal is to make sure that they really do that. And they don't have test cases because if they would have test cases, there would be no bugs, but they don't have test cases. So what happens, they create bugs. So when there is a bug in the system, that's not only your responsibility because you missed it, that's also the developer's responsibility because they didn't create that functionality or they created it wrong, right? So this is, first of all, this is team's responsibility. And also imagine that you don't have the documentation. And especially it matters for me as a manager, I can tell you that people are lazy. And if we don't have documentation, they will tell me, hey, I tested that. I read the requirements, I tested, everything works. But then we will find a lot of bugs in the production. And how can I prove that this person really tested? Or maybe that that is something that appeared later, or maybe that's, that is environment related. I don't have any proof, right? So when I have the documentation, I have test cases document. People are going and creating and covering every uh, requirement, and then they are passing or failing every requirement. So I exactly know, hey, this is what's tested. You put pass. Why it's failing in, in the environment right now? Because you put pass, but I see the bug. So I have the evidence, right, of the work done or not done. So that's easy. That's why we have this because it tracks every requirement. It shows your work and what you did, what you covered. Plus, it allows you as a tester to to really cover everything. Because I even I can tell about myself, and I'm sure you too. When just give you the documentation, the requirements, I tell you, hey, go and test without test cases, without anything. You're gonna miss a lot of things. Because you will not think about, hey, I need to I need to test 10 different test cases here. I need to test different cases over here. You will just quickly test it and say, hey, it works. Seems like it works. When you need to create test cases, and this is part of your process, you will think, what do you need to cover and why? And you will create test cases and you will make sure that you cover a lot of things. And this is why. There are a lot of reasons. This is not something we just created 
yesterday or today. This is that was created uh, and uh, by many people because they had reasons to create documentation, implement this process because they had problems. So every process we have solve some problems that was existing before. So yeah. before people were missing bugs and a lot of other things, right? So that's why we have test cases. Also probably why I love actual documentation, test documentation, then in my company we analyze after we execute everything. For example, at the end, uh, when iteration is um, at the end and we have some kind of release, uh, we analyze test documentation we are checking in which areas there were more bugs were less and we can analyze developers uh, loves this information because it shows them okay on which components some kind of bugs they can be related we analyze why there are so many bugs in this area first of all it can point out some but maybe some developers, they're not um, so mature, you know, <laughs> in development and they need help or supervising for the next uh, release, for example. Or uh, after analyzing, we can see, okay, some of the components that developers are working in uh, working with, they're really comp uh, complex. And uh, sometimes they need to spend more time to put more effort in this implementation. So some, so this test documentation later, it can help for such an analysis and bring um, the quality, overall quality and the next step, you know, when you are uh, kind of learning from your previous mistakes and to analyze them and you do better the next time that's actually point of quality assurance not just like testing at the end right controlling okay the quality but also bringing the quality to the next level that's i see this yeah point i uh, i am too lazy to find a bug can i buy the shirt <laughs> nice question <laughs> oh Actually, I was thinking about something merchandising store, but <laughs> if you really want, yeah, I can create some link for you or whatever I... that you can buy a t-shirt, of course, but we don't have any like merch store right now. Yeah, come on, Yarek, uh, join us. And uh, after that, you know, you will, you will get it uh, like with the... I'm too lazy to find the bug. Ah, oh. I saw you. Um, you actually, uh, yeah, you submitted your homework. So yeah. <laughs> okay. So, any other questions, guys? But yeah, I think that's that's it about this. Um, yes, everything's okay. clear. Thank you very much. Yeah, <laughs> that was long answer, right? <laughs> so yeah, absolutely. So from my side, that's all. If there's no any questions, then we can close the meeting. And uh, don't hesitate to ask your questions if you have them after the meeting. You can join the Slack and yeah, anytime. Okay then. Thank you. Thank you very much, guys. Yes, I do love this um, active people. Yeah, I will um, wait for your bug reports. Thank you. Awesome. Good. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.